Hey y'all, welcome back to Harmon Homestead. Here we are. Our first raised bed has been tilled today. My husband's on the tractor. He's tilling up our pasture as we speak. He's disking it up on the tractor. And we're fixing to plant some tomatoes here. So excuse the roosters in the background, but we're outside planting. So I did a video before on how to plant tomatoes. I'm gonna do you another one, okay? I'm gonna show you a few tricks that I've got this year. So, today is Good Friday. I always like to plant something on Good Friday. That's just tradition. I love it. And it has been a Good Friday, okay? So, <clears throat> I have four of my leggiest plants here. My tallest, leggiest, most ready to go outside plants. Again, we started these from bath cups, okay? We went from plastic bath cups up to red solo cups. And that's it, with drainage holes poked in the bottom. Look at that. I mean, he just needs to get in the ground. That's it. So, I mean, they're whoppers. So we need to plant these. So the first thing you need to do is make sure your ground's workable. It is overcast today. This is the first time that it's sunshine. It is supposed to rain all weekend. Breaks in the rain. Easter weekend, overcast in the 70s. That's what I'm talking about, okay? That's what you want. Because if it was gonna be 90 degrees, sun beating down, you don't want that on your little baby tomato plants. These have been hardened off. You must take your plants outside and expose them to sunlight a minimum of three times and make sure they're pretty big plants. Let them get adjusted gradually to sunlight heat if you start them indoors and not in a greenhouse, okay? So we've done that and these, I mean, they're ready to go. So I have two of the Better Boy tomato plants. And then I have, let's see here, two cherry tomatoes that I'm just gonna plant today and see what happens. The low is supposed to be 45 Monday night. I still think we're okay. This one is a red cherry tomato from Jiffy. And this one is a jelly bean tomato, cherry tomato type plant from Jiffy, okay? All of these are Jiffy plants. Now, make sure your ground's workable, it is. This fall, I added straw to my raised bed, let it decompose, let the chicken scratch through it. I've got netting all behind me here. We're gonna put the netting up, keep the chickens back out, but it's decomposed. And my husband didn't think it would till into this uh, soil, but it did, and it did really well. So, cause this whole bed was covered in straw. So just to let it break down. We use raised beds because everything here in Alabama, if you dig deep enough, even in a raised bed, you're gonna see your dirt go from black to orange. That's clay, okay? Everything we have is clay. So, we try to amend our soil the best we can. Let's get after it. First thing you need, fertilizer. I've got an old cup here that I've started seedlings in. This is triple 13, 13-13-13. -13. This is good stuff, y'all use it. In moderation, but this is what I put on everything. First year I garden. I didn't use this and I had nothing grow, okay? Now it does. Secondly, tomatoes are notorious for getting blossom end rot. Calcium deficiency. You can put Tums down in here. A lot of old timers use Tums or you can use eggs. I've got eggs that I have not even washed yet because it's been muddy. That's a lot of dirt on this egg. I'm gonna throw it down in there, crack it with my tool here, mix it into the dirt. Sometimes I might put three eggs. It just depends on how many I've got. If you've got calcium around the homestead, use it. Don't go out and buy something. Um, any kind of antacid tablet will work though if you don't have farm fresh eggs. But I mean, all these beautiful eggs, they're not just for eating. Throw them down in there. It'll help your plants and it just gives nutrients and it makes this soil better for next year. Look how dark and beautiful this soil is, y'all. This was topsoil, that's it. This was topsoil. Look at it. I've added potting mix from buckets in here. If I didn't want it, I've added the straw, compost, and it's still not the best, but it's come a long way from that right there. It's come a long way. So, all right, first thing you do, what I like to do is dig deeper than I'm going to plant my tomato. So, we're gonna go extra deep. You're gonna hit clay if you're in Alabama planting these, okay? You're gonna hit that. I like to go very deep. Also, think about your perimeter. You don't want to put this right up against 
where you're gonna have to hoe out for weeds and all, because you're gonna have them no matter what. You're gonna have them in a raised bed, whether it's just one or two, or it's a hundred, and your garden's taken over. This garden tends to get more weeds, but the soil is very poor. The better your soil is, the less weeds you'll have. So, what I'm gonna do is again, I've dug around it, and you wanna loosen up that soil. I mean, really get to it. You want it loose for those roots to grow and expand. You see what I'm doing here? It's almost like planting a tree. I, I really like to expand where I'm going all the way around and just kind of loosen it up. I mean, I'm hitting pure clay. That's way too deep. But this is where I'm gonna plant my fertilizer, okay? So I'm gonna put that red clay kind of back in there. I'm gonna take, let's see here. I don't know if you can see that on the camera or not. Let's see if you can. Yeah, you can. I don't know how to gauge it. You want a fair good bit, but you need to make sure that your plants are watered after this. If their roots are on that, it will burn them up if there's no rain or moisture to get it in. You've got to water after this. So what I'm gonna do is take my trowel here and I'm gonna turn this get it into that soil that way the roots will continuously go down and get this fertilizer fertilizer will come up it's it's getting it deep into the soil there's something for those roots to reach for okay that's what I like to do and I've had great success so I'm gonna mix it in kind of like cooking all right now I'm gonna start taking some of my good dirt And I'm gonna put it on top of the fertilizer, okay? That's what I do. Now, I'm gonna take a couple of eggs. I did two, okay? If they break, who cares? That's what you're gonna do anyways, do that. If you leave them whole, you, will, you can find a rotten egg this fall. Trust me, I did my first year. Break them up. And it's hard for eggshells to deteriorate, so you really, it's pointless if they just sit there. You wanna get this going. Crush them up. Just mix it. Now, I'm gonna tell you this. Watch out, first few nights, if you live <clears throat> out, raccoons will want to get after this. They love it. So, cover it up, okay? Especially with it raining, see, it's perfect timing. All these animals won't be out trying to get this. They'll be tucked away somewhere. They'll come out after the rain, still have to watch, but that's, that's something else. Okay, now. I'm gonna start with my red cherry tomato. And I always get confused on what I plant. I've taken videos of what I've planted. I've tried to uh, take photographs. I always forget, and I'm gonna fix that this year. So, red cherry tomato, and I started this inside on February the 5th. Isn't it pretty? See, he's not wanting to flop over. Now, he's got a little sun scald on him where I tried to harden him off, if you can see that. That's okay. As long as that top center is good, you're good. Now, this can be planted very deep. You actually could probably plant this to about right there. I'm not gonna do that though. I'm not gonna go that far. You can take off the leaves that are at the bottom. It really doesn't matter, y'all. If anything's left in your cup, sling it in that soil. And, and this one I've used like a little smaller cup and it did just fine. This plant is so healthy. Look at those roots. You wanna see them wrap around like that. That's beautiful, beautiful. Now see how I'm kinda of doing that? I like to loosen up those roots. Just like that. Take your mix, throw it back in there. Have those, those little, I call them tap roots, whatever they are, have them kinda of dangling. Put them down in there, okay? Kinda of loosens everything up. Now, you're going Put your soil back in. I kind of like to use my, my better soil for this all around it. Just like that. Now, do you have to do it this way? No, you do not. You can do it any way you so choose. This is just what I like to do. If your tomatoes lean in a certain way, this is your time to fix them, okay? You can prop him up. You can actually plant these on their sides. I have never done that but you can. Now, 
I like to heal everything that I plant as a transplant. I don't know why, I just do. I feel like it's more protected. If it's leggy, it helps sturdy it. That's just what I like to do. And I also like to make a trench around this. All the way around. If I want to go back and add Epsom salt, if I want to go back and add fertilizer, I put it in that trench because it lets the roots, when you, if you douse it around that trench, roots want to go to that, okay? Not just straight on top of it. I like a trench. And we've had droughts. So last year was a terrible drought, y'all. I had nothing. It was terrible. This trench all the way around, if you go on and get the soil to kind of forming that way, especially if rain's coming, it'll hold form and the water will pool down in that, okay? It just kind of helps hold moisture. That's what I like to do. That's just a personal preference that I've tried. Okay. I just like a huge space and that lets me know about where my tomato cage is gonna be. It works the soil around it. And that's it. And that was our red cherry tomato. I'm gonna leave those little leaves because I'm just going to. It really doesn't matter. They're gonna fall off eventually, but. So that's that. Now, what you're gonna do is use some kind of support. I have tomato cages that me and my husband have made with um, wire, and I'm gonna show you those, but you can use many methods. You can use poles, you can use a weave method with string. I'm gonna use my cages until I run out, and then I'm gonna go to plan B, okay? So there's that. I'm telling you, you can never make that trench far enough. You see how I'm taking my hand and going like that? That's all you need to do. Round and round. I love it. Love it. Okay. Beautiful. And he was wobbly. Look at him now. He's beautiful. Now, let me get my cage. It's messy, y'all. Get my cage real quick. Okay. This is my cage here. And me and my husband used this wire. We cut it. And he took it. And he looped it back over. These are the sturdiest, best things. And then we cut off the end so it pokes in the ground. It's great in our pasture garden with tomatoes. Because it'll hold in that clay soil down there. So, we'll take the spikes, go down. This little plant looks like we'll never fill this cage. But y'all, in a couple weeks, it'll be up to here. Tomato cages, even something this tall, is really not tall enough for a lot of these. And this is a cherry tomato. Our first year, we planted Everglades tomatoes. Those were like monsters. We couldn't get rid of them. They were humongous. They were overproductive. They were coming out of the cage everywhere. They were going on to other plants, out in the yard. I mean, you could, I mean, they were phenomenal if you wanted cherry tomatoes and we made quite a bit of pasta sauce with that. But this, this will, this will suffice. Now, how do I know that this is a red cherry tomato? I've just about forgot telling you, okay? So let me show you a money saving tip, a frugal tip on what to do. And I thought this was kind of cool, what I came up with. I'm all about saving money, y'all. You got to save your money because there's not a lot of it to go around. All right. Everybody ought to know what these are. Cannon lids. That was some jars that I had that didn't process. Either way, if you're using plain canning lids, throw them away after one use, okay? I said, these are too nice to throw away. I mean, I just hate to, surely something I can use these for. You can use many methods with this. To label your plants. People have rocks that they paint and label. They, there's so many things, y'all. There's so many things. I said, I'm going to use these cannon lids. So, I put a big X on it just because it did not process. My husband just drilled a hole in all of these. And what I'm going to do is right on here. And I love the date. I love that 2523. I like to know how old this plant is. This plant is two months and two days old. I love that, knowing that it took that long to get that, but it's supposed to skyrocket. What I'm gonna do on here, it's I'm gonna write red cherry tomato. 
and that was from Jiffy, okay? And then I'm gonna put two, five, 23. Just like that, okay? Should last in the rain, but if it doesn't, I'll give y'all an update. I'm trying this myself. What I also did is I like to crochet. So I've got yarn around the house. Everybody knows yarn gets tangled and half usable and everything else. So I just cut a um, piece of yarn here. And what I'm gonna do is cut him. And a little piece, it's brown, so you may not can see it very well on the camera. And in that hole my husband made in the cannon lid, I'm gonna take it in here. I'll thread my yarn in there. You can use twine, you can use anything. And I'm gonna hang my little tag there. And guess what, y'all? See how shiny that is? Anybody ever had birds try to get in their tomatoes and peck? Everybody had birds try to get in their plants? Peck? Critters? Wanting to peck, get in there? This flapping, this shiny, shiny movement, loud noise might deter something, okay? It's, it's great. It is great. I thought this was a great idea. Money saving. This is what you call homesteading, y'all. That's frugal. That's I ain't going out and buying nothing. I'm doing it myself, okay? Doing it on my own. If it works, it works. If it don't, it don't. But at least I can say I tried. So, all right. Now, we've tied him there. Just like that. You can see red cherry tomato. Now, you can take the um, ink off. That's no trouble. And reuse these over and over and over. I think I'm gonna make him a little bit, I'm gonna double knot him. There we go. And just like that, so if something's trying to get in this cage, that'll be rattling, it might spook it off, you know, it might scare it. A bird, that shiny thing. I did a video on how to keep chicken hawks out of the yard. Anything reflective will work, okay? Anything. Now that won't keep a chicken hawk out of the yard, but once I get 20 of these going and then banging in the wind and all that, that might help. So, I mean, hey, try it and see. That's how you plant a tomato. All you need is your transplant, calcium, a cage or fertilizer, a cage or some kind of stake, something along those lines. And then for once this year, I'm actually gonna label my plants. And that's it, y'all. There's nothing to it. There's nothing to it. Get out and plant. We're gonna do, I think four of these. That's what we got. I might plant a few peppers. I don't know. It's supposed to be a washout the rest of the weekend, so. It's this soil so beautiful, it's overcast. I said, I'm gonna see what these will do. Get out and grow something. We'll see you next time on Carmen Homestead.